so I became very excited when I first read some of the selections in this book that I have, the illustrated I Ching. Um, it was written in the 80s, so it's a little bit dated, but um, the ideas are fresh. So, because um, there's a, there's always this question for me that's really um, it's just always there about where does the painting come from? What if if you're not doing representational painting, that is painting that's based on your direct a painter's direct perception of the nature in front of their eyes and rendering that as you see it with your physical eyes then um, where is it coming from if you're working with abstraction as I do it, I don't sit down and try to depict what it's in front of my eyes but then does the painting arise from like what does it mean for a painting to arise from an emotional state and it always of course feels stilted to try to think about okay I'm gonna make a painting about anger because emotions don't actually last that they're constantly shifting states of mind and physicality and there's so many different inputs coming in and so I never understood it either when people said, you know, why don't you just paint about sadness if you're sad? And it's like, well, I don't, I don't actually really know what that means, you know, because how to stay focused on this particular texture of I'm sad. So that's far too conceptual. So anyway, here's some ideas. The Book of Change represents a profound effort on the part of its authors to observe the relationship between the behavior of humans and the constantly changing structure of the universe. The basic assumption put forth by the I Ching is that change, action, is not an isolated phenomena, but in fact affects every other facet of existence synchronistically. I'm just gonna turn down the music. So. Um, so the idea is that an accomplished sage can intervene with destiny by selectively conforming and responding to environmental phenomena that he learns to perceive, she learns to perceive. So um, painting in China in early times was a process of isolating the spirit of nature with a simple brush, brush stroke, being able to isolate that or capture a mood with a nuance of color and exploring the mysterious ways of nature painting used much the same approach as was used in divination. In observing her environment, the seasons, and the weather, the painter learned to see the moods of nature. So again, this really exciting idea of divination being much more about dropping into presence in the moment and having your gesture as a painter or a musician or, or whatever you're doing being in alignment and in in conversation with the underlying rhythms of nature and not um for example kind of pulled off by some kind of neurotic thinking uh you know, like a, a distinctly human neurosis, like, oh, I'm really pissed at this particular person. It's like, okay, the, the energy of anger is fine, but drop the storyline about it. And then how is that energy kind of um, moving through the body and, and what colors are um, appropriate to choose in that moment, just as, a, as a, someone who's moving through or having that state move through them. So um, the esteemed painter Wang Wei, uh, AD 415, said, painting should correspond with the I Ching. He went on to explain that the painter must transcend the limitations of the eye and delve deeply into the spirit and interactions of nature. The paintings should express the ever-changing processes of nature, just as the I Ching expresses the social patterns in those processes. So, um, and then he goes on to say, the author goes on to say, both art and the I Ching employ a triggering device that makes conscious that which has been buried in our unconscious. They both expose an intuitive, remarkably accurate awareness of the way 
things actually are at that moment and the way things tend to change and transform themselves. It kind of sounds a little bit uh, over intentional, like they employ a triggering device. But I, my translation of that would simply be that if you're able to relax into the process of painting, no matter what your state of mind, and it, if it is a practice and you're kind of used to dropping into the process of using colors and line and trusting it and not being overly self-conscious in the process. I mean, you always go in and out, right? But um, that something is able to come through because we're all immersed in the fabric of being as we are. And when something comes through that way, it's honest and other human beings, other beings can recognize it because it's just simply what's going on, the way things are, it's archetypal. So I have a couple other little points that I pulled out of this text that I thought were interesting to consider. Um, if Western pictorial art is designed, generally speaking, to express the world around us as the artist perceives it with his physical senses, then Chinese painting could be called the painting of dreams. It only borrows elephant elements from the world of appearances when necessary to convey an inner reality so profound that it cannot really be expressed by the artist, but only discovered by the viewer for himself. So the painting of dreams borrows elements from the world of appearances when necessary to convey an inner reality so profound. So it's not like this, I'm going to paint this painting about this. It's much more, it sounds so simplistic, but it's much more about just the painter being inhabited, um, present in the process. And then um, what comes through uh, is, is recognizable because it's kind of like the ground of being that we're all walking on. And then this one last part that uh, I thought was notable. A Chinese painter did not take his easel into the countryside to paint the scenery as he saw it. Instead, she would immerse herself in the setting for days, weeks, perhaps years, then return to her studio to paint her inner experience of the place. This is why so many landscape paintings take on an air of the fantastic. At the same time, there is a clarity in the painting that comes from a certain clarity that the artist achieves long before she begins to paint.